Yo, 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 this your dog, MC Mac for life, the underboss Supreme Bean. Kicking it here, man. Check out a humble soul.com, the website. Subscribe, share it. Hey, show your brother, your mother, your sister, your dad, everybody, man. Check out the website, man. It's going down. Got your boy on here, M Town. Stand up. Chill. Now, uh, with just a transition, I know you, you talked about to get, to bring it back to music. Um, you talked about having this track played at 380, 380 uh, Bill and then going on to make go to church hole. So yeah. from there, um, talk about that transition of you actually becoming a part, you and Scam Man going over. And I don't know, was K-Rock with y'all when y'all went over to Profit Entertainment too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, so talk about that, bro. All right, doing it. Like I said, I, by this time, I had brought out maybe five or six cassette tapes mm -hmm. on my own. You know, that's why I was, you know, pushing the MC Mac slash Devil Ship Productions uh, cassette tape movement. And uh, I was, you know, I met Paul and I rapped on um, Juicy J, I mean, DJ Paul and Juicy J's Spring Mix. Okay. And he was like, man, we got this song we want you to do with these two other rappers, K-Rock and Scan Man. I had never heard of either one of them. I was like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Shit, as long as I'm on the tape. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'll go over Paul's house and I laid my vocals. And then I don't know if they had laid their vocals before or after I did, but yeah. And uh, eventually we had met up. Me, K Rock, and Scan had met up. You know what I'm saying? And then Juice and Paul was like, man, y'all rock this song. We're thinking about, you know, putting y'all as a group and doing a group album on y'all and calling yourself the Killer Clan Cosby. You know, he said, so there was already six members of 3-6, but everybody was repping 3-6 on the tapes, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, he introduced me to K-Rock and Scan, and she moved to Killer Clay and Kaiser, and we did after, after Running Lilt, that was the name of the song that we did on the Spring Mix. Uh, I rapped on, uh, what was it, I think Mystic Styles came out after the Spring Mix of 95, and it came out with Mystic Styles, and I rapped on the Smoked Out, Loked Out Part 2, and after that, it was a uh, live by your rep. Live by your rep, and that's when we came with "Be a Witness." That was our actual first song on CDs to get nationwide exposure mm -hmm. as a group. Killer Clan Kaiser, "Be a Witness," "Rest in Peace," K Rock. Mm. Man, it's another one, man. Yeah, man. So saying that, so you go from there, man. Yeah, R.I.P. to him too. Um, when the actual Kazi album came out. Yeah, K Rock had um, parted parted ways, and he was replaced. It seemed like with Project Pat, who was fresh out of jail. Yeah, and so it was you, Scan Man, and Project Pat. Y'all came out with the Kamikaze Times Up. Yeah, um, talk about that, man. How was it? I mean, you got three different people, three different styles, and y'all coming together to create an album that has some real dope. Okay, so we was talking about the, uh, the Kazi album. Yeah, Times Up. So. Is you, Scan Man, and Project Pet. Take yeah. us back to that time, bro. Y'all three different people, three different styles coming together yeah. to create this project that went on to sell thousands upon thousands of uh, copies right. around the world, not just in the U.S. How yeah. was that, man? Can you reflect on that time? Oh, man. Back in the 90s, man. 1998, actually, I think it was when it was released. Uh, Man, it was, it was a fun time. Like, I think we, we recorded the entire album, man, at Cotton Row Studios on uh, Madison with uh, Nico Lears. And uh, Paul and Jay, man, had some dope dope tracks, man, and we would come in, man, and just lay the vocals, you know what I'm saying? And I already had the beats and everything ready, and we just come in the studio, lay our vocals, and, and move to the next song, or the next day, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, it was originally me, Scan, and, and K-Rock. And K Rock eventually went off and did his solo projects with, uh, with Lil Nick. Rest in peace, Lil Nick. Nick Escafo. So, uh, Project Pat was just being released uh, out, of, out of prison or whatever. So, we, we, put, we put him in a group with me and Scan. We already had a couple songs already in mind for the project. And so, it was kind of easy to kind of collide with him because, you know, Pat, he, he kept, you know what I'm saying? Pat was Project Pat. So, you know, it was fun, man. It was a lot of fun time, man. It, it, actually, we recorded that whole album down there in like two weeks. I mean, that's for laying the vocals and all, mm -hmm. and mixing and everything. But yeah, I think it was no more than two or three weeks we recorded that entire album. We knocked it out pretty quick. I got to ask you about one track on there. Um, yeah. Felt, felt, the, felt the pain. Was it um, Through the Pain? Uh, felt, felt the Pain. Felt the Pain, man. Through the Rain, and we're still here. 
talk about that, man. All three of y'all dropped some jewels on that, and uh, listen to that song really got me through a lot. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, this is the type of song you can listen to, man, when you kind of feeling a little down and going through something challenging, you just get that little extra motivation, that extra yeah. spark. So talk yeah. about recording that, uh, recording that track. All right, just like I said, me and Scan had already had some ideas and choruses and topics for the album uh, before we even recorded it. And shout out to Scan, man. Uh, that was one of his ideas, you know, his chorus, his concept. He came up with that, uh, with that topic of Felt the Pain, man. And uh, yeah, so when he heard the track, he was like, man, this would go perfect for the Felt the Pain. He was vibing to it. I'm like, yeah, that's it right there. I said, I'll come back, man, when you lay your chords, let me come back and do your ad-libs on top of that. So that's what you get when you hear the song. You know, I get, you're hearing the chords, you're here scan. I felt the rain through the rain, and I'm still here. And I come back, still here, you know, standing strong, holding on, bring it on, bring it on. So, yeah, that was, that was, that was his thing, and everybody go through pain and rain. Pat was just getting out, so he expressed what he was going through when he was locked up. Scan was going through his thing, and of course I was going through my thing. So, you know, definitely a good heartfelt song that, People can probably still relate to to this day. For sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, man. So, uh, as, at, at a certain point, y'all made a transition from, um, you know, doing business with uh, 3 Six, with uh, DJ yeah. Paul, Juicy J, and Property Entertainment to going on the branch off. I know at first it was, uh, from what I understand, Kamikaze Productions. Yeah. And then you ended up transitioning fully and creating an um, actual record label. Right. Um, and you, you um, you put out uh, the, the collaboration project and all that, the Kamikaze uh, 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 project, yeah. and just started dropping solos on that label, man. Just so talk about that transition going from a label that's arguably at that time the most successful um, record label in the city, yeah. to go on, man, to um, pursue um, business on your own and, yeah. and um, do your independent thing. How yeah. was that? How challenging was that for you? Oh, man. It was it was fun and easy. I mean, the, the, the art and the creativity was always there. Yeah, the business part of it was kind of messed up, you know what I'm saying, being transitioned to trying to go independent when you still signed under these long contracts. And uh, I think that was the, the main issue that me, Paul, and Jay, and Scan ended up having, which was nothing major. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was fun. The creativity part of it and the ideas and making beats and all uh, was easy. You know, that's the fun part about it. I always made tracks. So my thing was, when I was recording with Paul and Jay and doing my thing, I also still had Lil' Cool, Pimp Teddy, and other family members that were still rapping and still wanted to get in the game. And I had to stay loyal to my, my peeps. So I was like, okay, I'll tell you what. Me and Scan, Scan was hard as heck on beats too. I, I didn't even know he made beats, you know, until he remade a, that uh, play it while you hating beat on a little drum machine. He remade the whole beat. It sounded exactly like the, the beat that Paul and them around. I'm like, Scan, you made that off this little drum machine? Like, yeah. I was like, fool, I make beats too. You know what I'm saying? Let's, you know, so we started colliding on the little drum machine. He had borrowed from some dude. Right. And we just started messing around in his apartment. And we was like, man, look, we finished. We're going to start a production company. Mm -hmm. I said, look, he had a rapper that he grew up with that wanted to get in the game, Total Chaos. Shout out Total Chaos. Mm -hmm. He came in with Scan. I brought my cousin, Nigger Paul, and Teddy form the thug from the south side and our main concept was to be stay on the production side and just run the label not so much us rapping on our beats and stuff but getting this group and my cousins heard you know what i'm saying so uh we did the production on on uh thugs from the south side i think m child had ended up uh getting into it or uh, having some conflict or whatever he went solo and Somehow, no, we ended up uh, producing his album through Selecto. I think Selecto his had signed them to a deal and signed us as his production team. And it was from that point, from those from the South Side to M Child to the Kamikaze Inc. album, we did the entire album, all the production, me and Scan. And it was tough going through trying to get off contract. I can, I must say, it wasn't easy, but uh, it was fun, man. It was always fun on the creative side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just you personally, how many solo albums do you have? Ooh, we. <laughs> Considering the uh, the chopped and screwed and the different versions, uh, over twenty, over, yeah. over twenty. What would you say is your most successful project so far? If you're measuring wise. success on sales, mm -hmm. of course, chapters are the Mac for life with this easy come, easy go push. Mm -hmm. Because Grand Theft Auto opened me up to a whole nother uh, 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 generation of kids mm -hmm. that. 
probably would have never heard of me if they wouldn't. You know, you got to think, we were doing our thing, you know, back in the 90s where these kids were just being conceived probably. You know what I'm saying? These kids probably just being born. And now, they being here, hear me on Grand Theft Auto. And I'm like, man, this song old as a mother. And people be like, man, I see them on the blogs and see them in the YouTube comments. This song came out way in 95. They think it's some suicide boy stuff. But <laughs> Like, no, that's MC Mac, you know what I'm saying? So, but it's, 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 it's crazy how music works, man. It's crazy how, it's weird how God works, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I would say Chapters of the Mac for Life, by far, was my biggest solo okay. uh, project. Sure. Now, if, you, if you take sales out of the equation, uh, what album means the most to you? Uh, like, holds that spot, that spot in your heart, like you think, like, yeah. damn, I remember this period of my life when I recorded this, and this really I means would, a lot to me. I would say all of them meant something dearly to me because I was going through something. Every project has a story behind it. Every, every project has a story behind it. But I would say my, my one that meant probably the most to me would be probably the Magnificent. The Magnificent. Reason being, after I brought out Chapters of the Mac for Life and Tales from the Mac side, all my old stuff, this was my new new. All brand new, all produced by me, except maybe one or two tracks we scanned, but it was all independent. We recorded it, we produced it, mixed it, engineered it, got it mastered all, you know, everything was new. That, from that point, that probably was when, when I really, when it really stand out to me, you know what I'm saying? That may be my